Hi everyone, it's Drew again, and today we're going over Scarewinds and the Great Pumpkin Fest for 2021. Scarewinds is Carewinds Halloween event starting at 7 p.m. and lasting till 12 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays through mid-September through all of October with occasional Sundays. During the day, there's the Great Pumpkin Fest geared towards children with no scary actors, only Peanuts characters. The props for Scarewinds will still be up, but they shouldn't be too scary for children. The Great Pumpkin Fest is every Saturday and Sunday through October from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There are little events like hay mazes and free small pumpkins that are only for children. I only know this because I was told I needed someone 10 and under to enter the pumpkin patch. Most rides will be open during this time. It's a pretty standard Carewinds experience with a little bit of theming. The park is usually not as busy during the Great Pumpkin Fest compared to Scarewinds, so if you're just trying to ride coasters, this is the time to do it. Let's get to the talking about the main course. How is Scarewinds this year? From my experience, Scarewinds attendance has been pretty insane this year. I tried going on a few Saturdays about 10 minutes after opening since I live less than 5 minutes from Carowinds, and after waiting in traffic for an hour, I gave up and went home. They hit max capacity this year on multiple occasions, so that should give you an idea of how busy it is. They were turning people away at the gate only about 2 hours after opening. If this happens to you, regardless if you bought passes for the day, you will be turned away and your tickets will be valid for any other scare Wednesday. If possible, I highly recommend going on a Friday. It is still busy, but it is nothing compared to scare Wednesday on a Saturday. I went recently on a Friday and was able to get all five mazes done and ride a few coasters given I have fast lane passes for rides. Regarding the fast lanes, I highly recommend getting them if you can afford them. It will be hard to ride any coasters, especially on a Saturday if you don't buy fast lanes. You'll enjoy your trip significantly more if you're able to afford these golden tickets. Otherwise, you'll be waiting in extremely long lines for things even like Windseeker. There are Fright Passes, which will allow you to skip the lines for the mazes. I do not recommend the Fright Passes because in my opinion, the mazes aren't worth the amount of money you'll need to spend to get those passes. As for theming, it seems like the theming is way less done than previous years. There are around half the actors there normally are, causing some areas to feel empty. The majority of props from previous years are up except suspiciously the medieval plague section. I do miss the dragon as he was my favorite part of Scarewinds. Besides that we have all the same sections, just some are moved around a bit. Costumes are well done and most of the actors enhance the experience. I did have two separate actors trip me while they were getting in my face though I don't think the tripping was intentional. There are five mazes this year. New is Tooth Fairy, a maze themed around going to an unlicensed dentist. Depths of Darkness, where you go into the mind of the state line slasher, a serial killer. The Reapening, a corn maze of spooks where you walk through the old river raft area. Silver Scream Studios, Condemned, a movie studio where they decided it would be reasonable to kill people on set for more realistic reactions and then it burned down. And lastly, Slaughterhouse the Final Cut, a slaughterhouse where they have fallen on hard times so the only answer was to cut up homeless people and serve them as prime rib. If you'd like to get a more in-depth look into each of the mazes from last year, I'll put a link in the description. This year I feel like ranked, I would have them set in order, Silver Scream Studios last because I don't feel like the theming is that good, and most of the props aren't scary, though I will say my younger brother and his girlfriend were the first two to go in our group. It was an absolute joy to watch them jump at every actor. Next, I have the reaping. I think the concept of using a removed ride area to make a maze is really cool, but the execution is not great. There were four actors through the entire maze, and this is the longest maze, so there really isn't much to it. Right in the middle I have Tooth Fairy. I don't think this is scary, I don't have a fear of dentists, and it didn't really do much for me, but I will say the last prop in the maze is really cool and unique, so be on the lookout for it. Second best is Slaughterhouse Final Cut. I really enjoy how much work went into this maze, and the props are really well done. I'm sad that some of the set pieces aren't being done this year because of how few employees they have, but I highly recommend this maze. And in first place, we have Deaths Into Darkness. I really love the story of this maze and how creepy it is. The set pieces are well done and they really do have a creepy vibe to them. There's like a real story to this one as you walk through it. The last prop is also really cool. If you're able to, take your time and look at it. I guess the monster he was on the inside now shows on the outside. Now for recommendations. I'd really like to see some more mazes if possible. I'd say a minimum of six a year. I'm surprised there aren't more mazes for creepy dolls as I've seen that done at several other places. They leave plenty of areas for the actors to blend in with the dolls. Also I'm completely shocked there are no werewolves, especially as a maze. I guess it does make some sense though as there's only a vampire area and not a maze dedicated to them. I personally really enjoy classic monsters, so 
I'd love for them to implement that more into their mazes. I'd also love it if they started having either actors or props dedicated to local legend monsters. So for North Carolina, it's the Beast of Blattenboro, a giant monster cat that drinks the blood of anything within its reach. And in South Carolina, it is the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp, a large lizard man who attacks those who come near his swamp. Adding these local legends would be fun and a great dedication to the states that hold the park. Heck, I wouldn't mind seeing an entire section dedicated to state legends. Why not have it be the sillier side of things like with Bigfoot or Mothman? I'd absolutely love to hear some more of your recommendations for things to be added to Scarewinds. Who knows, maybe Carowinds will take some of these ideas and implement them into the park next year. In conclusion, I think the Scarewinds this year, while not as good as previous years, is still totally worth going to. It can be a pain to find a good day as it's the busiest time of the year, but with fast lane passes, you can still ride plenty of stuff. Without fast lanes, it's a bit harder to recommend, but overall it's a fantastic experience that I hope everyone gets to enjoy at some point. While you're on the rides, make sure to look for Charlotte lighting up in the distance. It'll be on the left of Fury's chain lift, it'll be straight forward on the bunny hills of Intimidator, and visible on many more rides. Tell me about your Scarewinds trip and or what you're expecting. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to ask and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching. And until next time.